Like now. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to welcome you all to this meeting of the Newport City Council Planning Committee, 2nd of March 2022. Um, and I check first that we all call it, and we are. Um, if I make a brief announcement, uh, today's meeting is being filmed live and subsequent broadcast by way of the Council's internet site. The images and sound recordings may also be used for training purposes within the Council. Would members please use their microphones to contribute to the meeting and please remember to switch off the microphone when you have finished. Also, could you ensure that you refrain from using any mobile devices during the planning committee and any mobile phones, iPads are switched off or on silent. Thank you. First item on your agenda today are apologies. We've had three, Councillor Richard White, Councillor Jason Jordan and Councillor John Jones. Pamela, are there any more? No other apologies, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, declarations of interest. Are there any members wishing to make declarations of interest? And if so, on which matter? No? OK, thank you very much. Third item on your agenda, the minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of February 2022. And they start on page three. Page four is blank. I'm going through for accuracy at the minute, if any member wishes to raise anything. Page five. Page six. Page seven. And page eight is blank. So would somebody who was present propose that they have a correct record, please? True record, Chair. Thank you. Is someone second that, please? Second. Thank you very much. And we move on now to the next item on your agenda, which is the planning application schedule. Uh, it re it uh, covers pages 9 to 53 of your paperwork. And the first item, number one, is application 21-1187. The site is St Julian's Comprehensive School. The ward is St Julian's. Now the ward members are Councillor Carmel Townsend, Phil Hoorain, and Councillor Holly Townsend. There are no public speakers, and the presenting officer is Francesca Saunders, Senior Planning Officer. So it's over to you, Francesca. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen with you now. OK, so this application is 220574. Uh, sorry, apologies, that's the second one. Sorry, apologies, this is application 211187 uh, for the installation of um, a perimeter fence to the existing playing field at St Julian's School. Uh, this is a, a aerial view plan here of the site. Um, so the the existing fencing shown here on uh, in a green line, and the new proposal um, is shown in blue, outlined um, in red on this plan. You can see the existing um, school buildings here to the left, um, and properties along a lane crescent um, to the south. Uh, so the recommendation for this application is to grant consent with conditions and the application is being called to committee as it's on council owned land. Uh, this is another aerial view of the site here. So as you can see, um, these are existing playing fields um, to the right of the image here. Uh, there's a, a slight depression um, in the existing playing fields. Um, and the existing fencing runs along this existing track here. 
the reason that the school would like to um, move the fencing to enclose this area of the playing field. Unfortunately, um, a lot of members of the public are using um, the area for dog walking um, and there's been some problems with antisocial behaviour. So um, the school are just looking to enclose this area so that they can use it for outdoor sports um, without any issues um, from, from people using it um, for the properties along Elaine Crescent and uh, other properties in the locality. Uh, this is another plan here of the site. So again, this red line here is the line of the existing fencing and the blue line um, is the new proposed fencing. The new fencing is roughly 260 linear metres um, and it will be 2.4 metres in height and comprise um, a weld um, meshing which will be dark green in colour. As you can see, the fencing runs along or will run along the line of um, the boundaries of a number of properties along a lane crescent. There will be a gate in this location and another gate in this location here. This is just a detail of the proposed fencing. So this is what the majority of it will look like. And then the gates um, will be this detail here. And like I mentioned, it'll be dark green in colour. These are just some images here of um, the properties along Elaine Crescent. So this is the existing track. Um, and as you can see, this is the depression here, which comprises the playing fields. Um, and this is the area here where the fencing will run along the existing site boundaries. And again, in this image, the, the fencing will run along here and taper off in, in this location here. That's just an overall um, summary of, of my presentation. Um, there have been no objections from the landscape officer, highways officer, tree officer or the environmental health officer. Um, we did have comments from two neighbouring properties um, just querying the location of the new fencing and if it would affect um, access arrangements um, and maintenance of vegetation. Um, but just to confirm, this land is within council ownership and there is no public right of access to um, the school playing fields. Uh, I would invite any questions at this point. OK, uh, thank you, Francesca. Um, committee. Questions, please. Uh, Councillor Charles Ferris first, and Councillor Laura Lacey. Thank you very much. Uh, Francesca, I notice on your photographs of the boundaries, there's um, some um, overgrowing of, of hedges. Uh, what will happen? Will those be grubbed out so you can site the fence? And what will happen with the hedge? I suppose it will grow through the through the fence, will it, or or what? Yes, that's so. So in terms of that, councillor, the existing um, hedgerow itself is actually on the boundary um, with the neighbouring properties. So the hedgerow itself doesn't um, actually enter into the boundary with the school. There are some trees um, along the boundary, um, but the, the fence line's actually been um, moved to avoid having any impact upon those trees. Um, but yet yeah, the fence, uh, the, the hedge line that's actually along along that boundary is is in the boundary of the neighbouring properties, so it won't be affected um, by the proposals at all. Is it, um, uh, is it anticipated that the, the, the hedge will grow through the fence? It is an open type um, fencing, it is a mesh type fencing, so it will allow um, light to grow through it. So in theory, yes, that the hedgerow could possibly grow through um, that, that fencing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Laura Lacey, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just, I wanted to clarify the fencing, um, the, the, the picture that you showed or you, you just presented, this is quite close to the wall. What's the, what is the gap going to be between the walls and the, and the fence? And is it going to be, um, you know, could you get rubbish thrown over there and then actually be left because you can't, you can't collect it? What's, what's the process there or is it going flush against those walls? 
Yeah, no problem, Councillor. So I'll just go back to this plan here, probably best um, illustrates it. So in this location here, the, the fencing will be um, adjoining the boundary here. So it will be abutting the existing fencing that's in the neighbouring properties. So there won't be um, any sort of ability to throw rubbish over in that location there. Um, as it tapers off here, this, this land um, is also within um, the ownership of the school, so they will still maintain this area here um, as as would they maintain the existing um, playing fields at the moment where where the boundary fence is. So, I you know if, if there were any issues with with you know rubbish being dumped over there or anything, then this is still within the the maintenance of the school um, itself. Um, and then where the fence tapers off here, there isn't really, um, you know, sort of marginal piece of land left for for rubbish to be thrown over or anything. It's it's tight to the boundaries here and then um, the fencing tapers off. So there's not really sort of a, a no man's land, um, you know, where where rubbish could be dumped or anything like that. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lacey. Uh, Councillor James Clark, then Councillor Mark Spencer. Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. I don't know if I'll come in too early here, but I was just going to propose that we accept the uh, officer's recommendation. Uh, but I see Mark's behind me, so I don't know if you want to hold back, but you know, I, I know where I am on this one. OK, thank you, Councillor Clark. Proposing accepting officer recommendation. Councillor Mark Spencer. Yeah, just one question. I, I'm happy to second this. Just one question is um the path that leads into the school there will be a gate there for children's access in and out access and egress to the school which would be locked on a daily basis and open yeah this is the um sort of rear um playing field so the school councillor yeah. so apart from um the, the properties along elaine crescent some of which that have got yeah. gates into the playing field this area isn't actually open to the public um but yes these gates will be locked um at the end of the day so effectively um th this area here which is in the sort of yeah. circle depression uh, yeah um, I know where well, I don't live far from then I used to go to school there many years ago but yes I I, I was second uh, the, the recommendation. OK, thank you, Councillor Spencer. No one else is indicating they wish to speak. Are you prepared to move to the vote? It's been proposed and seconded that we accept the officer's recommendation. Pamela, can we move to the vote, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Guy, can I have your vote, please? Yes, for the officer's recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Clark. For Councillor Watkins. For the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Ferris. For the recommendation. Councillor Spencer. For. Councillor Lacey. For the recommendation. Councillor Forsey. For. Thank you. And finally yourself, please, Chair. Uh, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. That's a unanimous vote for the officer's recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you, committee. We now move to item two on your agenda, which is on pages 21 to 25 of your paperwork. It's application number 21-1252. The site is the Gare Primary School, Gare Road, Newport. The ward is the Gare. Board members, Councillor Stephen Marshall, Mark Whitcutt and Councillor Debbie Wilcox. Um, the presenting officer is Stephen Williams and there are no public speakers. So Stephen, thank you very much. Good morning to you. Morning Chair. Just share the screen. All right, can you see over the screen? Yes, thank you. OK. OK, it's um, Ritz Gare Primary School and the proposal is to improve disability access at the school. Um, it's Grade 2 listed um, and the school is basically on um, slope, sloping land. So this is the higher level and this is the, the lower level. Um, <clears throat> this is the full application. Um, so it's seeking, uh, it's dealing with the external changes that's proposed. Um, and they are uh, to provide um, a new disabled parking space here um, and then two um, disabled access ramps in blue. Uh, just to get your bearings, this is um, Gare Road and the main entrance is here. 
Um, so that's the main entrance um, and there's there's a step at the moment. You can see with the yellow lines. So the paving there is being um, uh, altered to remove the step. Um, this is where the disabled parking space would go in here. Um, obviously the steel box would go and the um, grass bank would be um, altered to have paving to allow access around the side of the building to the main entrance. Um, so that's the plan for the disabled parking space there, shown in yellow. Um, this is um, one of the access ramps on the northeast wing. So you can see the access ramp is being put in around the side with an opening created on the wall there to allow access to that entrance. And that's the northeast wing entrance there, so it's here that the ramp, ramp would go next to the playground. And you can see the elevations, it's only a low brick wall with some railings. And then the southeast wing ramp, um, the ramp would come in here uh, with an opening created there. The ramp is sort of at the bottom of these steps that lead between the two playgrounds, would lead to this higher level, and then this brick wall would be removed to allow access to this entrance here. That's just an elevation showing that ramp. Again, just a low dwarf wall with railings. Um, so in terms of the issues, um, they're quite minor developments, so they don't really affect neighbours. Um, the only issue really is obviously it's a listed building, so we've had to have special regard to the listed building. Um, and the conservation officer is supportive, um, has asked for conditions. Um, for example, uh, details of the railings need to be agreed, um, but subject to those conditions, we're recommending approval. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, committee. Uh, Councillor Guy. Yeah, it's not really a question. It's just an observation, really. I'm surprised that uh, this facility hasn't been sort of uh, requested earlier in in respect of the fact that, you know, disabled uh, pupils, etc., that they should have whatever's required. It just seems uh, obviously there's reasons why. It's not a question, it's a statement. Anyway, thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Guy. Councillor Trevor Watkins. Thank you, Chair. Could we have the plan of the property, please, uh, put back up? And uh, the place where the disabled parking space is, which is in the red, I take it, the red dot. That's right. And the disabled access are the blue ones. Yes. Why are they so far apart from the disabled parking why can't it be closer to the access to the building it seems silly for me that disabled parking is one side and then they gotta get out of the vehicle and go all the way around to the other side to get into the building surely they can find a closer place to park disabled vehicles okay um so at the moment the only disabled parking space is in this part of the site here which um, provides access to the north wing. Um, because there's no disabled um, access between this north wing here and the south wing, the only way of um, a disabled person um, exiting and getting around to the south wing would be to, to go around a steeply sloping road, which doesn't have a footway. So this parking spaces is, is, is proposed to cater for the south wing to allow easy access into the main entrance of the school. Um, so that's 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 the reason for that is to allow for visitor disabled visitors um, to be able to access the school. These access ramps are to uh, enable um, disabled users um, using the playgrounds. So at the moment, in this part of the building and this part of the building, there are the toilets and the changing rooms. 
Um, so at the moment, there's no way of getting direct access for a disabled person from the changing room into these playgrounds. So that's the reason for those. Right, so how far would a child, a disabled child, have to travel to get into the building and where would they park? OK, I understand the red dot is for disabled visitors, but would it mean disabled children as well? Or do they have a separate parking space? Um, it's, it's for all disabled users, anybody who is using obviously in the school. OK, so what is the distance that disabled child will have to get out of the vehicle and go into the entrance? How far is that away? Outside walking or in a wheelchair? Um, do you, I, I haven't got any way of measuring the distance, but it, but it, it's it, I would say that it's probably a two minute walk. In the wind and pouring rain, I think that is uh, unacceptable, be quite honest. So okay. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. I think surely the Newport City Council could find a better place and closer place to park closer to those entrance for disabled children. OK, thank you, Chair. OK, um, Tracy Brooks, I, do you need to come in or? Yeah, just to say, Chair, I mean, I, I think appreciate the comments of uh, Councillor Watkins um, and I think we'll report that back to, to the applicant. Um, but obviously we are just considering what's been put before us um, today in terms of what the, the proposal is. So, it, you know, it's not really for us to, to be debating the merits of, of where and how long it takes people to access. It's whether it's suitable from a planning perspective, but certainly, you know, the points are noted and we will re we will relay that back to the applicant. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Councillor Watkins. Point well made. Uh, any other committee member? No, no questions. Is somebody prepared to propose something, please? Yes, Chair. I propose that we accept the the, the uh, planning. Uh, Chair, I'll I'll second that. OK, so it's been proposed. Uh, uh, we accept the officer's recommendation, which is granted with conditions. Uh, Pamela, could you arrange the vote, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Guy, can I have your vote, please? Yeah, I accept the officer's recommendation. <coughs> <coughs> Councillor Clark? Accept. Thank you, Councillor Watkins? Councillor Watkins. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. For, for the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Ferris. For the recommendation. Councillor Spencer. For. Lacey. For. Forsey. For. Yourself, please, Chair. Uh, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. That's unanimous for the officer's recommendations. OK, thank you very much, committee. We now move to item three on your agenda, which is application number 21-1253 on pages 26 to 32 of your paperwork. The site is the Gare Primary School again, Gare Road. Uh, the ward councillors, Councillor Stephen Marshall, Mark Whitcutt and Councillor Debbie Wilcox. And the presenting officer again is Stephen Williams. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. OK, so this is the listed building application um, for the um, alterations to improve disability access to the school. Um, the listed building application deals with the external changes that have just been discussed. Um, but obviously, as we've um, just dealt with the full application, I won't repeat those um, proposals on this presentation, but the listed building application also deals with um, <coughs> internal changes um, which don't require plan admission, they only require listed building consent. Um, so on this part of my presentation, I'll just deal with those internal changes. Um, and they are um, two access, uh, two lifts that are proposed um, to link between the lower range and the upper range of the school. Um, so these ranges are 
linked by um, what's called a link corridor, uh, which is next to the school hall. Um, at the moment, the only way of traversing between the two um, areas of the building are via these steps here. Um, so what's proposed is to provide um, a platform lift in a storeroom here, uh, which would enable access out onto the corridor there, um, and then to have stair lift installed um, in this area here. Um, so, so that's the, the lift in the storeroom, which will allow sort of access onto the corridor. And then these are the steps then towards the upper range uh, where a stair lift would be installed, which would look like that. And the other proposal um, internally is to refurbish the toilets. So the toilets at the moment are located in the lower range here and in the upper range there. Uh, so there's um, girls' toilets and boys' toilets on both parts of the building. Um, and at the moment, um, they've got a, a layout like that. They don't have um, a, a single sort of um, a separate disabled WC. Um, so you can see that each toilet will be um, refurbished and altered to allow for each set of toilets to have an accessible toilet. Um, these are photographs of the existing toilets and as you can see um, they're in quite a quite a poor state um, and so in desperate need of, of refurbishment. Um, so conservation officer is, is um, supportive of the scheme um, subject to details uh, relating to um, materials and um, asking for historic building because some of the uh, features within these toilets are original fabric. Um, so subject to those conditions, we're recommending that listed building consent be granted um, subject to conditions and the um, application being reported to CADU. Thank you, Chair. Great. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thanks very much. Uh, over to committee, please. Questions? Have you raise your hands? Uh, Councillor Trevor Watkins and Councillor John Guy. Thank you. Okay, Chair. Thank you, Chair. One uh, clarification. The size of the lift, does that um, take a full wheelchair, the big wheelchairs, ones where children are actually stretched out um, in like a canvas tent, or is it just a normal wheelchair that can be accessed? I don't know if I can. Um, can't quite make out what that is. Let me just uh, see if I can zoom that in a minute. No. Bear with me. I'll have to. I'll have to look that up. Okay. Thank you. But it, but it looks like it's it's obviously catering for a wheelchair, but I'll just find out what that measurement is in a minute. Bear with me. Well, I'm concerned is some wheelchairs are really large and uh, obviously if uh, the child has got that type of wheelchair, then they're not going to be able to access that anyway. OK, okay. thank Bear you. With me, then. It looked like 1500 to me on that diagram. Yeah. Obviously, the child also um, will be in the wheelchair and would they have uh, somebody supervising them there when they use in the lift? And if so, is it capable of holding the, the uh, supervisor as well or the teacher, whoever's going to be with that child? Sorry, Chair, while Steve's looking at that, if I just sort of comment, um, I mean, of again, obviously the 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 applicant, i.e. the council, have looked at what their needs are um, for the type of user that would need to use that facility. So, um, so I think we've got to sort of trust that that they've submitted, you know, um, 
a proposal which meets their needs. And, it, and you know, just to point out that this is the listed building application as well. Um, so we're just looking at the impact that this has on the on the fabric of the historic building. OK, thank you, Tracy Brooks. That's helpful. Yeah, my apologies. This my system is very slow and I, I am finding it very difficult to open the plan. Um, oh. All right, some, somebody's helped me out. The measurement is is 1.5 meters. OK, the diameter. Okay. Is 1.5 meters. OK, that's uh, lovely. Thank you, Stephen. That's uh, that would be ideal for somebody to be in that lift with the child. Uh, obviously, children play around with buttons and everything else, so. Yeah, thank you very much, Stephen. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Guy. Yeah, good uh, point raised by Councillor Watkins. All I got to say is that it's good to see <laughs> the disabled uh, pupils that uh, and disabled people that are being uh, provided with the necessary wh whatever because you know they've been a forgotten group. It's again not a question, a statement. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Councillor Guy. Any committee member wish to answer quest ask a question? No. Um, oh, Councillor Forsey, please. Uh, I'd just like to propose that we accept the officer recommendation, please. Thank you, Councillor Forsey. Is someone prepared to second? Second that, Chair. Councillor Lisi. Double second. Double second. Double second. Double second. Yes. Okay. Two goals. Um, OK then, so it's been proposed and seconded that we accept the officer's recommendation, which is granted with conditions subject to notifying CADU. OK, Pamela, could you organise the vote, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Guy, can I have your vote, please? Yeah, I accept the officer's recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Accept. Mr Watkins. For the officer's recommendation. Councillor Ferris. All the recommendations. You, Councillor Spencer. No. Thank you, Councillor Lacey. For the recommendation. Councillor Forsey. For. And finally, yourself, please, Chair. Uh, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. And that's a unanimous vote for the officer's recommendations. Okay, much obliged. Thank you to you all. And thank you for your contribution, Stephen. Um, next item on your agenda is item four. It's application number 22-0057. It's on pages 33 to 36 of your paperwork. Site is a public convenience, Livingstone Place, Mainly. The ward is Victoria. Board members are Councillor Fazina Hussein and Councillor Gavin Horton. And the Presenting officer is Francesca Saunders. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen with you now. OK, so this is um, application 220057. Um, it's for the installation of a retractable awning um, at Livingstone Place. This is um, a plan here of the site and the surrounding area. So main D and limited are the applicant um, on this application. They have already obtained planning permission for um, a cafe to um, be, be erected at Livingstone Place. This also um, in, encompasses the conversion of um, the former public convenience building um, in this location. So this plan is taken from the already approved um, cafe application. So as you can see here, we've got the public convenience building and then some landscaped um, garden areas in this location. The red line boundary on this plan shows the location um, of the proposed awning, which you can see is adjacent to the existing um, public convenience building. Uh, so the recommendation for this application is to grant consent with conditions and again this application has been called to committee uh, as it's on council owned land. So this here is an aerial view of the site. Um, you can just, just see past the trees here. This is the site in this location here. 
and the public convenience building here. Um, th this obviously is the, the main thoroughfare um, into the city centre. OK, so we've got some images um, again of the public convenience building here. Um, this is before um, any works took place on the site. Um, and then we've got um, some elevational images here which just show um, the location of the awning on the building and how far um, out the, the awning will come in relation to the public convenience area. It's proposed to um, have around four um, small tables outside um, with up to eight chairs underneath uh, the retractable awning. Again, this is just a zoomed in plan here that shows the location of the awning. So it would be above uh, the existing patio area uh, and just provide an outdoor seating area. Obviously, you know, due to, to COVID, um, the applicant are very keen to provide an outdoor space um, where people feel safe um, and able to you know, eat and drink outside as well. OK, so this will be um, the type of awning that will be used. This is a, an image here of the, the housing, so it's a it's quite a nice slim line design um, which will fit quite comfortably with um, the, the existing building. Um, this is the type of material um, here that will be used and it will be a, a mid grey in colour to match the approved elevations of the building. These just some images here of the existing site into construction. So these are the um, these are the proposed landscaping um, beds. Again, this is already approved. We're just just looking at the awning today as part of this application. Um, and as you can see, there's works um, ongoing here in terms of renovating and converting the existing building. Um, OK, so as I've explained, Main Deal Limited um, are the applicant and they're, they're in the process of undertaking the works. Uh, in terms of the exact measurements of the awning, um, it would be 8.27 metres in length and it would project 3.22 metres from the building uh, when fully open. Um, as I mentioned, it would have a very simple design which would complement um, the frontage of the cafe and it would be a mid grey in colour. Uh, the awning would only be open um, during the hours of opening of the cafe, so 8 till 8 on Monday to Saturday and 10 till 6 on Sundays. Outside of these hours, um, it would be retracted and all of the furniture would be taken back inside the building, so there wouldn't be an opportunity for anyone to use that area outside of the cafe um, opening hours. Um, we've had no um, objections to the proposal um, from any of the statutory consultees um, and we've had no comments from, from any neighbours on the proposal as well. So I'd invite any questions at this point. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, committee, questions? Mark Spencer, can you indicate it, please? And then John Guy. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah. Firstly, a comment. Um, this is a great project coming on well, and uh, and will finance the area brilliantly. I just want one bit of com confirmation because the the title is a bit misleading. It says public convenience, uh, but the the owning is actually going on outside the cafe and and not a public convenience. Yes. Yes, that's correct. The public convenience is um, is being converted into the yeah. cafe. So yeah, it, yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. It's just that if somebody from the public was to read that, they be, might be a bit uh, concerned. Right, okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Point well made. Councillor John Guy. Yeah, only um, the fact uh, it's a fantastic um, uh, situation, and I agree with. with uh, with the comments already made. As to the management uh, of this, this is very important really. Uh, are, are we going to be able to enforce the management of it whereby you know everything is is kept as it should be from the point of view, clearing up tables, which you know pulling back the awning. Uh, is there any way in which we can enforce the management? It's, well, it's up to the, the people that run it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, bringing all the, the tables and chairs and, and retracting the awning um, inside, 
we have a planning condition um, that would be attached to the permission that requires um, the awning to be retracted you know, within those hours and for every, all, the, all the tables and chairs to be brought back inside. In terms of a sort of a, a wider um, management point of view, obviously, you know, that primarily is down to um, the applicant, but obviously we've got certain controls within um, you know, the environmental health department if there were to be any issues um, with, with noise or anything of the like. Um, you know, they have um, certain controls within that service area to be able to deal with with complaints from that point of view as well. Thanks. It's, a, it's obviously a, an excellent initiative, isn't it? Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, Councillor Guy. Um, next indicated speaker, Councillor Charles Ferris, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Francesco, I may have missed this. I, I, I didn't didn't see it. But is the awning operated mechanically or manually? Uh, I believe it's manually. Yeah. Okay. Just as well, uh, the uh, mechanical ones can be very temperamental and uh, and very expensive. But. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ferris. Uh, any other councillor wish to uh, speak or comment, please? Okay. Oh, Councillor Forsey, I do apologise. No, it's okay. I just popped up to say I'd like to propose we accept the officer's recommendation, please. Okay, thank you, Councillor Forsey. Is there a second? I second that, the Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, Pamela, could we move to the vote then, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Guy, can I have your vote, please? Yeah, accept officer's recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Except. Councillor Watkins. For the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Ferris. For the recommendation. Councillor Spencer. Except. Councillor Lacey. For the recommendation. Councillor Forsey. For. And yourself, please, Chair. Uh, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. That's a unanimous vote for the officer's recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you all concerned. Uh, the next item on the agenda is item five on pages 37 to 52 of the paperwork. It's application number 21-1259. The site is Rosedale, Kylick and Lane Langstone. The ward is Langstone. Ward members are Councillor William Routley and Councillor Ray Mogford. And if I turn my page, the presenting officer is Grant Hawkins. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Grant. Share my screen. There we go. So um, the application is on council owned land, uh, hence the um, reason for it to be called a committee. Uh, it's for the proposed change of use of the existing dwelling house to a care home use class C2, enlargement of parking area, alterations to means of enclosure, including new retaining wall, proposed external alterations to the annex building, including new roof that will raise its height and solar panels. Um, the recommendation uh, is that the application is granted with conditions um, with delegated authority given to the head of regeneration investment and housing to issue a decision after the 14th of March if no new concerns are raised by consultees. The reason for that is because we've gone back out to, to consultation to a couple of neighbouring properties uh, and the expiration of that period is on the 14th of March. Excuse me a second, so I'm just having um, issues with my slides. There we go, that's better. So this is an area image of the site. Um, so here is the, the main dwelling house building. Here is the annex building. We've got the car parking area, the curtilage of the property, and some land here to the west, which is owned also owned by the council. So the nearest properties are located to the west here, to the north. Um, Chepstow Road runs along here, with the site being accessed off Kyle Lickin Lane just by here. 
So the main building is currently used for the care of four children, but its lawful use remains as a dwelling house as its current use for the care for this small number of children has not materially changed the lawful use of the dwelling house. The existing annex is vacant, uh, it's in poor condition and in need of renovation and improvements. So it's proposed to refurbish the existing annex building to provide three units capable of being used with a little more in, uh, for children with a little more independence, but still under the management and supervision of the staff on site. It is proposed that these units will be used for the emergency accommodation that will enable children placements to step up into the adjacent care home, which will provide them with a longer term accommodation or to move on to other establishments or possibly a home. The existing care home will continue to operate as it currently does with the annex uh, providing the emergency facility which is needed. The reason planning permission is required for the change of use of the whole site is because the conversion of the annex to accommodate these additional three children would result in a material change of use of the site in its entirety. So this is a photo taken from the uh, junction of Kyle Lane and Chepster Road. This is the main dwelling house. The annex is tucked just behind these uh, the boundary treatments. It's not very visible from um, from Chepstow Road. But as you move up Kyle and Lane, views open up through the site entrance. Um, and this is the existing annex building with parking forecourt area here. So the proposed uh, these are the proposed elevations. The proposals uh, to the annex building to facilitate the uh, internal works is to raise the height of the roof. This is to provide a building regulations compliant roof pitch, um, which currently isn't in situ. Um, alterations also include the installation of solar panels here in the southern elevation and changes to existing windows and door openings um, to provide obviously the internal layout, which is suitable to the user group. So this is the proposed layout of the annex. There are three separate units which are all uh, accessed independently. They provide a living room with small kitchenette, a toilet bathroom and a bedroom. As you can see, they're, they're both e they're all equally sized. So this is the external proposed layout of the site. So the annex is here. The main building is here. So this is the parking area. So the access along this uh, boundary here from Kyle Licken Lane is proposed to be widened. This will be done by removing walls and setting back boundary treatments. Um, the extension of the parking area sort of to the south here is by approximately 52 square metres. As the slope falls away uh, to the south, uh, some small retaining walls are proposed along this southern area um, just to obviously retain the, uh, the proposed hard surfaced area. And these will also be proposed with two metre high fencing around to secure the parking area to obviously ensure the safety of the residents using the existing property in the annex building in the future. So the key considerations are the application of the sustainability of the site and its location, the impact on the countryside and the special landscape area in which it's situated, the impact on neighbouring residential amenity, the impact on the amenity of the future occupants, and impact on matters of highway safety. So the site is located outside of the settlement boundary for prime purposes in the countryside. So uh, policy SP1, which is the sustainability policy in the local development plan, seeks to guide development to more sustainable locations within the urban boundary and preferably on brownfield sites. Policy SP5, which is the countryside policy, requires development to be appropriate and respect landscape character and biodiversity of the immediate and surrounding area and is appropriate in scale and design. National policy notes that most for most rural areas, the opportunities for re reducing uh, car use and increasing walk and cycling and use of public transport are more limited than urban areas. Um, it's very likely that the home will almost be entirely dependent on private motor car. And in general terms, the location is in breach of the aims of local and national planning policy in terms of sustainability. It should be noted that the site is an existing house and annex and is already a traffic generator and this can offset some of the policy harm but the overall conclusion is that the site is located in a less sustainable area and there is a minor breach of local and national planning policy. In terms of the justification for the location, um, as it's already not a council run site, um, there's the obvious 
benefits of the economies of scale uh, for economic savings and cost the cost benefit for having this facility located within an existing council site. Uh, the benefit to the children uh, live residing at the property uh, for having a more quiet and pleasant surrounding, uh, particularly if they have experienced trauma. And it also, as research suggests, um, there's a reduced risk to children, particularly if they are vulnerable. Uh, due to the possible exposure of ne negative influences, which may be more readily available within the urban area. So in terms of the impact on the countryside uh, and the SLA, the proposed changes to the annex are considered to be positive and are more in keeping with the host building. Uh, so whilst they would be visible from certain vantage points, they wouldn't be considered harmful. The combination of the work, such as fencing, increased parking area, retaining walls, does risk create an institutionalised appearance that is different to the existing res domestic residents, but it is considered that this risk can be mitigated by appropriate landscaping, uh, agreeing suitable surface details and boundary treatments, um, which will seek to soften the appearance of the open car park when viewed from Kyllikan Lane and from the wider rural vantage points. Um, policy GP5 does uh, require submission of a landscape scheme uh, in the countryside and policy SP8 requires positive contribution to the area through high quality design materials and management. So officers do consider that subject to the conditional regime that has been put forward um, the, the, uh, within the committee report, sorry, um, these measures can be controlled and the impact is considered to be acceptable. One thing that is also being conditioned is that this land here with the hatched black, which is within the control of the of the council as the landowner, um, this historically hasn't been used as garden space and there is no law for use to, for this to be used as garden space. However, we are going to uh, recommend a condition that this isn't used as garden space in conjunction with the residential property. Um, the reason for this is to limit the um, potential accumulation of domestic um, structures or proliferation of um, residential paraphernalia, which could have a wider visual impact on the countryside and special landscape area. So moving on to the impact on neighbouring residential amenity. Um, as you can see, this is the site to the north. There is a residential property here. To the west, there's another residential property here. Um, this area, um, this, this property is called Highfields and it's located some distance from the uh, from the, from the annex and the and the, the care home property. Um, it's separated by this land, which is owned by the council. Um, obviously, I mentioned this is controlled not to be used as garden space, so it's um, we're, we're satisfied that there shouldn't be any impacts that are harmful on the resident, residential amenity of this property. Um, it's considered that overall the intensification of the use of the existing site, bearing in mind its purpose is to give home to minors that will be under supervision from staff, um, is unlikely to give rise to any increased disturbance to the nearest neighbouring properties, uh, which are located some distance from the site. In terms of the impact on highway safety, this is Kyle Lickham Lane. This is the existing uh, the existing entrance. Um, so the parking provision that is put forward um, is in line with the parking standards as set out in the sustain, uh, supplementary planning guidance documents. Um, so there's no concerns with, with regards to parking provision. That is suitable. The existing access does have poor visi visibility, but in proposals do include improvements that will widen the access, set back boundary treatments although the extent of those improvements are not explicitly clear at this stage. Um, but we're, uh, we're confident that securing these details via condition, um, they will be a suitable benefit in terms of highway safety and um, visibility. So that will be controlled by a condition. Um, so yeah, moving me moving on to the conclusion, those are the key points. Um, despite the site not being uh, in a typically sustainable location, despite there potentially being other um, sites that could offer a more sustainable location, they wouldn't offer the linked accommodation that this site does and the associated economic benefits and the logical tie-in with the existing care home, as well as the, as well as the locational benefits for the residents. Um, it's considered that uh, subject to the proposed conditional regime recommended, the proposals will preserve neighbouring residential amenity, the visual amenity and the appearance of the countryside and landscape area. And the upgraded access will also offer uh, betterment in terms of highway safety. The scheme will provide much needed emergency accommodation for children of whom the council have a social responsibility to house. Um, so overall, it's concluded that on the balance, 
the proposal is acceptable given the specific needs of the user group, uh, the specific uh, the number of intended occupants and the current use of the site as a small care home, and this outweighs any harm to sustainability. So just to reaffirm, the recommendation is that planning permission is granted with conditions, uh, but delegated authority is given to the head of regeneration investment and housing to issue a decision after the 14th of March if no new concerns are raised by consultees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Grant. Thank you very much. Um, a very detailed presentation. Thank you. Um, committee. But no raised hands at the minute. Right, Councillor Trevor Watkins, then Councillor Charles Ferris, and then Councillor Yvonne Forsey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Only one question. Um, the area with the black hatching, which is uh, not to be used as a garden, who's going to maintain that then? I assume NCC will maintain it, cutting grass and so on. Yeah, it's, it's council owned land, um, so it you know it is within control of the council. So in terms of maintenance, that, that's not a problem that, you know, it can be maintained, um, you know, obviously to make sure it doesn't overgrow, etc. Um, what, what we what we what we there is no lawful use for it to be used as a garden. Um, and we're just basically putting the condition on to just to, to, to reiterate and ensure that it isn't used as a garden and that there isn't a proliferation of structures and the use of it as a garden doesn't impact neighbours. OK, understand that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Watkins. Councillor Charles Ferris. Thank you, Chair. Um, Grant, how, how long has the um, existing property been used as a children's home? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, I, I can't commit to a time. I know that it has been um, at least a couple of years, um, but I, I don't know off the top of my head. I can just check the supporting statement um, that was submitted and see if it very quickly sets that out. Um, bear with me two seconds. If it's a very quick answer, I'll try and give it to you. Um, I'm afraid I don't have that detail to hand. Sorry, Councillor. OK, thank you. OK, can we move on then to Councillor Yvonne Forsey, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that I sit on the Corporate Parenting Committee and um, I praise the fantastic improvements we've had in children's care facilities in recent years. And I'm also aware of the need we have for these facilities in Newport. And um, I, I support this application and I would like to propose that we accept the officer's recommendation. OK, I'll second that, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Forsey, and it's been seconded. Any other comments from any other count committee members, please? Right. We could move to the vote then, Pamela. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Guy, can I have your vote, please? Yeah, I accept the officer's recommendations. Councillor Clark? <coughs> uh, accept. Thank you, Councillor Watkins? For the officer's recommendations. Councillor Ferris? For the recommendation. Councillor Spencer. Accept. You, Councillor Lacey. For the recommendation. Forsey. For the recommendation. And yourself, please, Chair. Uh, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. That's a unanimous vote for the officer's recommendations. OK. Thank you very much and thank you very much to the committee. Um, we've reached the end of the planning agenda. The next item on the agenda is appeals decisions, which is on page 53. It's for information only. The committee agreed to note. Yep. Great. Great. Okay. 
Um, so with that, I thank you all for attending and, and wish you all a good day. Thank you very much. Bye now. Take care.